So I imagine just like the vast majority of you, I am sick and tired of talking about Hunter Biden. And yet here we are about to talk Hunter Biden again for the 7,000th time because the political mission of the Republican Party isn't to better the lives of its constituents, but to investigate Hunter Biden, a civilian son of the current president, for the fourth, sixth, or seventh, or eighth, or a hundredth time, everything he's ever said, everything he's ever done, all in a desperate effort to impugn Joe Biden. So before we dive into the latest development in the ongoing eternal saga of Hunter Biden, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell, and maybe check out my Patreon. I'd appreciate the support. So buckle up. Hunter Biden. Again, tired of talking about him, but what is new? Well, Devin Archer, a former associate of Hunter Biden, somebody who served with him on the board of the Ukrainian uh, energy company Burisma, that's a name that's probably ringing a gazillion bells. Well, he testified before the uh, House of Representatives, the Republican-led House Oversight Committee, in a closed-door session, meaning you will not find clips of this scintillating, spicy testimony. It was done behind closed doors. And the best that we will get, well, the best that we've gotten so far are the assurances of various Congress people, Democrat and Republican, both of whom are trying to spin what happened in this closed-door five-hour testimony to their benefit. The best that we could potentially get is a released, unredacted, uh, unabridged transcript, but that's in the hands of the Republican majority. Uh, Their chairman, James Comer, gets to decide when, where, and how that transcript is released. In best case scenario, we're probably looking at a few weeks, and that's if he chooses to release it at all. So the long and short of it is, based on what we know, is that, again, Devin Archer, a former business associate of Hunter Biden, a former friend of Hunter Biden, said two important things as far as the media is concerned. Number one, He said that when Joe Biden was the vice president, and I I suppose, I think, if I understand my time frame there, after Joe Biden was no longer vice president, but before he became president, so at least at at least some point during the time of his vice presidency, uh, Joe Biden spoke to his son Hunter during meetings with Forest Business Associates, foreign business associates, about 20 times over the course of a decade, mostly over speakerphone and including while serving as vice president, a former business partner of Hunter Biden testified to Congress on Monday. So 20 times in 10 years. That's two per year. Now, Republicans are running with this, kind of. They're actually more subdued about this than you would expect, given that they were hyping up that this is finally the smoking gun, which will not only indict, uh, metaphorically speaking, Hunter Biden, but it will finally nail President Biden as well. And the muted response of Republicans, which we will get into, relatively speaking, uh, suggests that this is not quite the smoking gun that they would have you believe. And based on what we know, uh, that's actually the case. So what do we mean? Well, Democrats are saying the testimony yielded no evidence of wrongdoing and that Archer, again, the, the witness, said the conversations never focused on Hunter Biden's business. The committee has yet to release a transcript. So just to recap, he says, listen, Joe Biden was put on speakerphone by Hunter Biden 20 times over the course of a decade when business associates were nearby but they never talked business. Hmm, that doesn't seem like quite a smoking gun. And again, because we didn't have cameras on, we don't have the transcript, it's hard to dig deeper than that. But I do want to go into some of the reaction from members of the Republican Congress who were there. So, well, I shouldn't say Republican Congress because I'm about to speak of a Democrat, Dan Goldman. Dan Goldman was the only Democrat in attendance for the entirety of the duration. Apparently, he was the only congressperson. He stayed there not only through Democratic questioning, but also Republican questioning as well. He was the one constant, according to reporting. And he's calling on James Comer to release the transcript. He's like, listen, we got nothing to hide. This doesn't make the case that you think it does. Just go ahead and release the transcript to the American people. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a smoking gun. Andy Biggs, who is a MAGA cultist and somebody who he's a member of the Freedom Caucus, he's a Trump loyalist, he wants to uh, impeach President Biden. This is what he has to say after uh, his round of questioning when he left. Did you talk about the bribe at all? The $5 million bribe? He he didn't know anything about that. He didn't know anything about that? No. He didn't know anything about that. So the reporters are saying, listen, you guys have alleged that uh, Joe Biden received millions of dollars in bribes from um, foreign agents. Did this guy know anything about that? No, he didn't know anything about bribes. Oh, okay. So there's no evidence of a bribe. Okay. All right. Well, what about James Comer and Jim Jordan? They're the two loudest voices in the anti-Biden movement in Congress. Well, what do they have to say? Well, here they are on Sean Hannity. And 
just their words speak volumes. Oh, do you believe that this is now officially the Joe uh, Biden bribery allegation? And do you believe that you will be able to prove that? Jim Comer. I sure hope so. Do you think this is the evidence? Will you be able to prove it? I sure hope so. Hmm. And I, I do believe that uh, there's a lot of smoke. And I do believe there's a lot of smoke. I do believe there's a lot of smoke. Not a fire. Not I know there's fire. Not even I know there's smoke. I do believe there's a lot of smoke after this testimony, which they assured the American people would be the smoking gun. Hmm. Where there's smoke, there's fire. We, we just heard testimony right. today that Joe Jim. Biden had lied to the American people. It's so bad that even Hannity's cutting him off. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. And you see that Jim, look at Jim Jordan there. Jim Jordan has never known a camera that he has not fallen in love with, and you can just see the defeat on his face. That's not good. So the last clip I want to play is from Dan Goldman himself, again, the Democratic congressman who was there. He was the through line the entire time. Listen to what he has to say in the aftermath of, again, the five-hour testimony of which he was the one and only constant. There is not a shred of evidence of a single conflict of interest of President Biden ever doing anything in connection or in relation to Hunter Biden's business ventures other than advocating for the removal of a prosecutor general who was advantageous to Burisma. The only evidence we have right now of any official action by President Biden in connection to Hunter Biden's business interests is bad for Hunter Biden's business interests. So there you have it, folks. Again, I don't know what to make of this. I am being tentative um, because I obviously, again, we didn't have cameras. We don't have the transcript. But right now, it doesn't really look good for the Republican spin machine. Now, of course, they're doing everything in their power. They have no interest in giving up this investigation. They're going to spin this as, okay, okay, maybe it wasn't a smoking gun. Maybe we can't prove it. But it's just a little bit more credibility for us to continue investigating. They will cling to anything and everything to justify the next hearing, the next investigation, just to drag this out because again they are banking on the idea that with the american people so distracted living their lives raising their families working their jobs dating socializing having hobbies having lives that they'll see these memes and headlines and go hmm well donald trump is under investigation that's not good but damn joe biden the sitting president he's under investigation too that sounds shady uh, and maybe it will depress voter turnout or maybe it will make people less um, invested in Donald Trump's legal and political woes. It's a cynical attempt, but hopefully the American people who are paying attention, they'll see that, hey, listen, Republicans, you guys have made a tall series of claims and you need to back it up. Hunter Biden was the civilian son of Joe Biden. He was never in government. Uh, there's no reason why uh, any sort of nepotism or you know, uh, Nepo baby activity on his part where he's trying to cash in on his father's name, unless Joe Biden was knowingly involved with it. You really have nothing here. Uh, but we'll see what happens when the transcript is released, if it's released.